curbs can make you and break you in this game. I'm going to help you out to get more consistent, to get a better setup for the curbs and to actually attack them for once and nail them. So you can actually gain some position in race, especially on the chicanes. I'm gonna dedicate this to chicanes. I think they're most difficult. And if you can nail the chicane a little bit better, then overall curbs should not be an issue anymore. Oh, and by the way, driving a perfect corner in ACC can be so satisfying, but nailing a curb perfectly is even more satisfying. Let's get into it. So this first situation I'm going to show you, you can actually take this line on Imola, but if you have not a decent setup, then the next thing will happen. So this was actually really horrible. You can take this line, but if your setup is not right, this is not possible. Let me show you the next clip of a setup that was slightly changed. You see how that forgiving that is compared to that first clip? You could just eat it now. Also this corner. And this corner. I'm just eating them. Now, I'm not gonna lie, this BMW is quite good on curbs, but even with the wrong setup, it is completely useless. So let's get into the setup, see what we need to change to make that better for you. Let me show you. I'm calling this curb loser, yeah, because it kind of lost on the curbs. I was driving with this on an LFM race. It was pretty decent, but sometimes you struggle with inconsistency with these curbs, yeah, and they can really screw up a race for you I'm just going to show this real quick. Right height to the minimum, yeah? Now, that on that other clip, I'm using this curb monster. I added 6 millimeters of right height. Now, that can feel like a lot, and it is, but to be honest, I wasn't really losing quite a lot of lap time because now with this setup I could actually eat, uh, go for that more curb with actually improved the lap time and I got a little bit more understeer which made it a little bit safer and especially if you're kind of like beginner or you're advancing but you still feel like you're you're not really consistent then can, this can really help you out so changing the front right height and maybe the right height rear with it as well so let's say this was uh, 65 and this was like uh, 50 then if you add like six like six millimeters here or and then maybe do a few clicks as well so we keep that difference of right height front and rear now obviously you can do this smaller steps as well but i'm making this i came with a bit of contrast so you can actually see a big difference and with the bump stop ranges on the front i increased with the other setup it was four and now i put it on eight this really worked well and uh, these changes, these changes, uh, that's it, you know, it's not more difficult than this. Um, what you also can do, if you want to change the behavior on curbs, you can also increase the bump settings a little bit. Uh, that can change the behavior, it's, it's the way how fast that wheel is going into the car and this will be slightly delayed, so a little bit more bump means the car will jump a little bit more and sometimes this can be beneficial to get rid of that bottoming out when we on curbs when the wheel rate are on the low side i believe it's better for the curbs as well if you put this really high then you can imagine if the spring is really hard then this as soon as you hit the bump that will really lift the car up as well so low wheel rates but low wheel rates are the way to go in my opinion you can have the best curb setup in the world, but if your inputs are off on the throttle, brake and steering, then you're still gonna have a massive issue. Fully braking here and trail braking a little bit into this right hander, and as soon as I hit that bump, I release the throttle and the brake, I hit the throttle again, and then when I'm on that second bump on the left side, I also not really pushing on the throttle because that can really get you into trouble. And you can see here on this clip how I'm actually gaining in this chicane. Now, this was actually a track limit, so I backed off. I, I did not overtake him, I backed off, okay. Let me show another example on a different Cory. That's a little bit of a faster chicane on Monza. 
Okay, let's go into this braking zone. I'm braking here uh, fully and I'm also trail braking here into this corner slowly. Now here I am actually a little bit on the throttle, but the steering inputs are very important here. If you just do this too much or make the direction change too fast, then you get into trouble. So in this corner, you can see how this car is bouncing and shaking, but we stay on the line. Let me correct myself a little bit here. We choosing a steering input when we go onto the curb in a chicane or a normal corner, and then we're gonna stick with this input. I can change a little bit direction, but don't do that a lot, especially in this, uh, what was it called, this Monza Ascari kind of a corner. Because we have the same input, the car will not do weird things on the curbs. But what if I would do this when the car is bouncing, then we get into trouble. Now direction changes in fast or slow chicanes. If you're hitting the bump and you're going for the, for the right, then that bump is gonna be, you're gonna keep your steering input, the car is gonna come down. And as soon as the car is like on all four wheels on the tarmac, this will be your moment to push that wheel to the other side. And you can do this really fast in the slow chicanes. And on fast chicanes, you're gonna have to do this a little bit more genuinely. But this comes with, bruh, lots of experience. You're gonna have to practice. I hope you're gonna have a decent foundation with this video so you don't have to struggle for two and a half years like i did now if you're liking this content please hit that like button so it can spread to more people that would really help out the channel and if you are struggling on all tracks and you cannot figure out why you're so slow on track guides maybe you want to watch this video next where i explain how to attack those track guides so you can actually benefit from them